ready? Yes, sir, whenever you are. social media that you uh, like, like this and share it. Um, this is a great message tonight that we really need to get out. And those who have your phones, I want you to go to Facebook real quick and share this um, because we, we want to get this out. This is a word that really need to be heard tonight. And so we're going to study this and we're going to get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Amen. Amen. So let us all stand as we open with a word of prayer. in the name of Jesus we come on tonight once again in our Bible study lesson to hear a word from you God we thank you Lord God for this time and opportunity to be able to receive what you have for us God Father I pray for everyone on the sound of my voice those who are watching and maybe tuning in later God I need you Lord God to do what only you can do tonight I pray for your Holy Spirit I pray for your glory I pray for you I pray for your wisdom your knowledge and your understanding and all our getting tonight God help us to truly get understanding I pray, God, you bring, you bring clarity to your word because it's not our will, but your will be done. I pray for House of Freedom and everyone that's connected to us. I pray for those who need to be saved tonight and who need to be connected. I pray, God, there's something that's said or heard that will help change their lives. And we thank you now. I decrease as you increase in me. I pray, God, you will speak to me through me for your people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. So tonight. Tonight, tonight. So tonight, I got my little pointer. Step my game up. <laughs> Teach y'all tonight. Pay attention. Um, tonight, very important lesson that I really want us to get. Um, just for a quick announcement, tomorrow is our marriage ministry. Those and our marriage couple, we meet tomorrow in our pool of building at 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, marriage ministry. Also, this Sunday is Youth Sunday. Please bring all our youth out. I want to see all our members. I really want to pack our church out this week, as well as next Sunday. Next Sunday is our uh, retreat Sunday, and, it's, and I named it Service Fair, because I, I want each ministry to get a table, and they're going to be like a job fair. You know, you go to a job fair, and you get people to sign and want to get a job, well, this is what we're doing on Fourth Sunday. We're signing people up to serve. Everybody going to have to find somewhere to serve in this ministry. Amen, amen. Breakfast will be served. We will have breakfast. It will be a fellowship for us to get to know each other. Well, I'm going to try to find something to put name tags on it so you know people's name, with a face, so you know who, you, who your brothers and sisters are in the street. But most of all, we got to come together and serve. We can't just be a church just existing, but we got to be a church that's serving. Amen? Amen. amen. So that's what Fourth Sunday is all about. So tonight, tonight, you're at House of Freedom. Welcome all our visitors. You're at House of Freedom tonight. And this lesson, God has put in my heart that I pray that you all 
get it. Amen. Amen. Stop me any time for any questions. And if you go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 1. Anyone have to say amen for me? Amen. Amen. I'm going to read it from the King James Version. It says this. Can you, can they see the slide? Can we let you see the slide pretty good? I might have to slide over a little bit because that's blocking. So it says this, brethren, if any man is overtaken in the fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Y'all see that in your Bibles? Yeah. I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. It says, dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall in the same temptation yourself. Y'all see that? Galatians 6. Galatians chapter 6, verse, verse number 1. Brethren, if your brethren, if a man be overtaken in the fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest there also be tempted. I'm going to deal with the subject tonight, and I really want you to get this. The subject tonight is stop the violence. Oh, wow. Stop the violence. Now see people here, violence. You got to stop the violence. Those who take taking notes, stop the violence. Everybody say it with me. Stop, stop the, the violence. violence. Stop the violence. Say it loud. Stop, stop the, the violence. violence. Stop the violence. That's what we're teaching tonight. Stop the violence. And I need us to really get this because you got to understand, it's something I truly need y'all to get. You don't get nothing else in your walk with Christ. Understand this. The Bible is not written for the world. The Bible is written for the church. The only person can understand what the Bible is saying is those that believe. So everything that's in this Bible, it's not for the world to act upon. But it's for believers. And I need us to understand in the church that we're in, in the day we're in, we have to stop the violence in the church. Yeah. If we don't stop the violence in the church, we'll never stop the violence in the street. Amen. amen. Can I get an amen there? Amen. amen. The Bible says charity starts at home. That, that's, that's two ways. Yeah. Charity starts in your house as well as the house of the Lord. Amen. Because the Bible says when judgment comes, when it's judgment day, he's coming first to judge the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the house had the instructions. Mm -hmm. The house had what they need to know what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. The house knows what it needs to do to even treat each other. God put this in my spirit this week that we have to teach it if nobody else does it. We have to teach in the house of freedom that we got to stop the violence. Mm -hmm. Jesus. We got to stop destroying each other. We got to stop tearing each other down. You know what bothers me? How we can smile and clap our hands and be our Holy Ghost and then in the same breath you step outside and you talk about somebody. Yeah. This Jesus. is what drawing people to stop coming to church because they get more love in the streets yeah, than they do in the house of love. Yeah. This, the church is really the house of love. It's the house where you're supposed to be where love overflows everything. Love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers your faults. Love covers your sickness. Love covers everything about you. Mm -hmm. But it seems like it's the place that gets the less love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I even said it to somebody that it's free so you must love because at least they puff, puff, and pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
The street gets more love than when we had the liquor. We passed the bottle around. But in the church, you can't even get blessed without somebody saying you thank you all that. We're going to talk about it tonight because I refuse to have a church that's like that. We got to draw the line somewhere. We got to stop. Everybody say what? We stop the violence. We, we protest and we march all in the street, but we need to start marching right here in this church. Because we're tearing people up and they're taking that hurt in the streets and that's what they are showing. What's going on in the street is the residue of what happens in the house. Yeah. Mm. If you don't have God in your house, it shows how you hit the street. My Jesus. If you don't have God in your children, it shows when they go to the schoolhouse. We had a shoot today and a fight today at Beach High School. Yeah. Parents don't have any control anymore of our children. Jesus. And some of our children, you just, they just losing their mind, I, I guarantee yeah. you. Some of it ain't on the parents. But I realize we got to stop the violence and the starts in the house. Amen? Amen. Amen? So the word violence, the word violence, we in Galatians chapter 6. The word violence, it means an action or word that are intended to hurt people. That's what the word violence means. Actions or words. That are, that are intended to hurt people. God never leads, especially his leader, in the dark. Mm -hmm. God, God don't do that. No, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the thing to get me is a lot of people, even in our church, don't understand the violence that they put out. Let me tell you how, how a lot of y'all do y'all violence. Y'all get on the telephone. Oh, Lord. Oh. Some of y'all hold conversation just because you think nobody else know that, that it ain't going to get out. Right. Because if you ever don't want something out, you don't need to say it. Amen. Amen. Because the time you put it out, I don't care if you think you're talking to your best friend, somebody else is going to find out about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We got to stop about it. And when you think you're talking about something or you're doing something, what you're doing, your actions and your words are hurting somebody. My yeah. Jesus. How you know? Because that person you're talking about might not even hear it, but you're hurting the ears that is listening. Right. Mm. Let me tell you why. Because now you are poisoning somebody yeah. about somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And poison is like mayonnaise. Come on now. Once you put on the bread, it goes to sticking, then it goes to spreading. Yeah. Yeah. And now that person don't like that person simply off of what you say. Mm -hmm. Now it had nothing to do with what we're really going on. So in the scripture, he said, when you find your brother in the fault, can I, can I help y'all? Everybody's going to be found in the fault sometime. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Even as pastor, when you have an issue with pastor, something going on in the church, don't get on the phone and try to start a click. Come to me. Right. He said, when you find your brother or sister in the fault, those who are spiritual. Yes. Yeah. That's why the rubber meet the road. Because some people church, some people spiritual. Yeah. Mm. He says, now listen, but your actions or your words that are intended, that means it, you gave it an address to go to. You meant to do that. When something attended, something you, you, you stamp, you sign, you seal, some words were intended to hurt you. I learned that in arguments. That's why I didn't stop talking when I get mad because something ain't going to come out of my mouth that I really don't intend to say. So if I don't want my good even spoken of, I just learn how to be quiet. Amen. Because the flesh done rose and I'm going to start saying some things you think, oh, Pastor, I ain't knew you talk like that. I really don't, but you not saw a side of me. Jesus. That the Lord was still dealing with. So I learned when I can't say nothing good at all, I just don't say nothing. Because I don't want my attentions mm -hmm. to be even spoken of. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. He says the most violence we do in our lives, in the church, anywhere we go, is the violence of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. Your mouth do more damage than your hands can ever do. Yeah. Because listen, your mouth and your, and your hands, listen, your actions is your hands. He said, violence is your, is your actions and your words that are intended to hurt people. So not only does your hands hurt people by what you do, 
That's your hands. But your mouth hurt people by what you say. Yeah. And do you realize that your words travel further than your actions? Yeah. Yeah. I can forget what you did, yeah. but sometimes you'll never forget what a person said. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's true. Well, I forget, I forget you slapped me. But I ain't forget you told me my mom was ugly. That's them, them, <laughs> them words there. Yeah. Them words there. Them words. It's some things. It's some things that will stick to you. It's some things that stick to me, and I use them as, as motivation that was spoken over my life. And I realized, man, them things stick to me. They always say sticks and stones may hurt my bone, but word never hurt me. That was a lie. Yes, it was. The sticks and stones ain't hurt that bad. It was the word that cut deep. Yes, it was. The sticks and stones was able to fix some stuff, but the words it cut you deep. Where it seems like you can't stop the bleeding. You, a lot of people. I ain't just talking about y'all. A lot of people in the church. We're talking about the church today. A lot of people in the church. They come in bleeding, looking to be sold up. Yeah. And instead of getting stitches, they get more cuts. Oh, yeah. mm. They come to get sold up. We're in the hospital. So God said, y'all, we, we got to be an example. We got to stop the violence. It got to stop somewhere. Yeah. And it got to stop but with somebody. Mm -hmm. So I challenge House of Freedom to be the stop. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to see the thing that goes on in our church, and we still call it worship. Mm -hmm. Lord help. And it should be some point in your life where the church rolled over in your house. Yeah. Why are you still on Facebook doing all that crazy stuff, and you talking about you go to church every Sunday? What you coming for? Right. Y'all want to get real. Okay. What you coming for? Yeah. You're not changing. You ain't taking nothing in. What the purpose of you being here to say I was here? Yeah. 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 If nothing changed about your life in the whole year you've been here, what you coming for? Right. Right. Amen. You're wasting your time. Yeah. Because if you ain't looking to change, you're wasting your Time. That's what I talked about last week. Stop fooling yourself. Because if you don't apply the word, it's never going to change your life. That's right. James said, not only be hearers, you got to be doers. It come a time when you got to change. You got to start applying what God says. So you got to stop the violence. You got to stop. Everybody say with me, stop the violence. Stop, stop the, the violence. violence. Boom. Our church. Can y'all see that? It's kind of light. Our church and lives are created to be different. Okay. I need y'all to get this. Our church, I can't speak for everybody else's church. I only can talk about the sheep that God has given me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I only can talk about the authority in the house that God has given me. Mm -hmm. So that I mean our, I mean house of freedom, our church and lives, those who are connected to the church, mm -hmm. are created to be different. Understand, God created us to be different. We are a different church. We are a different breed. We cut from a different cloth. We are different in worship. We are different in the way we think. We are different in the way we walk. We are trying our best to be for real. So, he says, we are, we are created differently. We will not be like the old church or other churches. Understand this, because violence goes on in other people's churches. I don't. I, I refuse to have it go on here, right? Because life is too short. Yes. yes. And life is too fragile. Yes, it yes. is. Spirit is fragile. People' lives are fragile, and we don't have time nor the capacity to be tearing people down. Yes. yes. And if we can help it, I pray the House of Freedom will never be a church. Mm. That people come in here and run out more beat down than when they came in. My Lord. I don't never want to be a church that we get on the phone and we start talking about our sister and brother. That can't be us. That's not freedom. That's still bondage. And there won't be a church that we are in competition with each other. Yeah. Mm. You should never be in competition with nobody. And please don't think because you're in certain places that you're going to get close to the pastor. We ain't, I'm close to everybody. I have a relationship with everybody. Ain't nobody different from the next when it comes to my eyes. Everybody, because you know why? You don't belong to me. Amen. You're not special to me because you're special to God. I'm only using what God gave me. Understand that because you know why? Position and competition brings violence. Yes. 
Yes, yes, it does. People do whatever it takes to, to think they're winning. Yes. yes. And people believe, don't, and I, I'll say this right here, don't ever believe that you can tear down somebody else to build yourself up that you're going to succeed. Right. right. Don't believe that you can tear somebody else down to build yourself up and you're going to succeed. Right. It's in the scripture. We're going to get there. Don't ever believe that. We got to be different, y'all. I pray that we be a different church that love everybody in spite of how jacked up and crazy they are. Right. And guess what? I'm jacked up and crazy too. Amen. And God will use a jacked up, crazy person to tell the dying world that Jesus is still Lord. That's right. This church is Say not so, about sir. your issues. It's not about your problems. It's no judgmental. We come in here because we all need Jesus. Amen. He said, we, we got to be different. This thing is dead in my heart. We got to be different because if we were supposed to be like everybody else, we should have just went and joined their church. That's right. That's, right. That, that's what's wrong with, with Savannah by herself. We got a thousand churches, everybody doing the same thing, and people out here looking for something different. Jesus. It's, 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 it's like we sharing spouses yeah. around here. Yeah. That one flew up top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Because if I wanted what you have, I should have had mine. I should have just came sharing with you. Yeah, right, right. God didn't create us to be the same. Otherwise, we should have been in the same thing, doing the same. If we gonna do the same thing, we might as well share each other. That's not what God does. He said, I need us to be different. We will love each other. Y'all say it with me. We will, we we will love each other. Love each other. Let me point there for a minute. In order for you to love somebody else, you got to learn how to love yourself. Yeah. Amen. I need us to get to the place of loving yourself. Yeah. Because when you can love yourself, it makes loving people so easy. Yes, it does. That's true. Because when you love yourself, you'll never measure your life off of somebody else's life. Some people go look themselves in the mirror because somebody else looks a certain way. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Y'all going to push me in the You got to learn how to love yourself. Right. Don't worry about who likes it. You just love, love yourself. That's right. That's because I wasn't created for everybody to like, but to get to heaven, you got to love me. Yeah. Right. Amen. Right. So we going to love everybody. We going to love each other. Yeah. No matter what I'm down for is, you know why? Because we going to get to a place of loving ourselves. Yeah. And loving yourself, not, not how you want to love yourself, but love yourself how God loves you. Amen. But how do God love you? That he died for your sin. Hallelujah. God loved you so much that he took off all his glory, came down in the mm. flesh, and died. Mm. That's how much you are worth to God. Mm. In loving yourself, you will learn your worth. Yes. And I'm saying this in my journey that I'm dealing with. I'm not saying something that I'm on the outside looking in. I'm learning every day my worth and what I am worth. Because we've been living so far under our means till it makes no sense. Mm. I don't need you just to live off your potential. I need to live, I need you to live off who you are, mm -hmm. and your your, your your potential is the mark you're trying to hit. So he says, forget about those things that are behind you. Yeah. Forget about what you did. I need you to first press. The word press means you need to understand who you are now. Right. That's right. I need you to press. Get, get all that other stuff off you. Who I am now, I'm in the pressure mode. I understand my worth, who I am now, and I'm pressing towards the mark. What's the mark? To my full potential in life. Amen. Yes. Amen. But how I'm going to do that, I got to learn how to love myself so I can love somebody else. Amen. And when you love somebody else, that's when you can receive love back. Amen. Well, it's hard to love somebody who don't know how to receive love. Yeah, that's, that's why a lot of us are single, because you don't know what love looks like, because you never first love yourself. Yeah. We got in so many broken relationships, broken marriages. We in upside down situations because we never took the time to say, let me work on me. Right. 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 Anybody ever sat down for a minute and said, let me just work on me? Yeah. No, you had to go through some relationships. Yeah. Then you finally got to the point to say, hey, I'm getting all these zeros. Let me work on me so I can get me a hero. Yeah. Lord Jesus. He said, we were loving each other. Amen. Some things. Y'all hear me, and I mean this starting tonight. Everybody say tonight. 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 Some things <laughs> we will have to check at the door. That's what I got to do. We will start Jesus. checking some stuff at the door. This door is swaying two ways. Yes, sir. If you're trying to come in, you come in right. If you ain't trying to be right, you see how the door, you come on right back out. That's it. Yeah, yeah. But notice this. 
Before you even enter it, you got an opportunity to leave everything at the store. My Lord. Yes, it is. Leave what the last church did at the door. Yeah. Leave what your last relationship did at the door. Yeah. Leave all that foolishness that's out of God, that's hindering you from changing, that's destroying your mind and your spirit. Leave all that stuff at the door. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of taking a test. I'm not going to take a test. They make you empty out all your pockets and leave everything in the car. Because you don't need nothing in here that's going to distract you right. or take your mind off of what you come here for. Right. I know women love their problem, but sometimes I be looking like, why are you talking that? You ain't got nothing but bills in there. Yeah. <laughs> but you know why? Because we are comfortable in having something on our shoulders. Right. Y'all, y'all, y'all catch that later. Even, even, even as a man, we're comfortable talking some kind of, 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 of wallet or something on us. Women, y'all can't leave the house without two things, some earrings in your ear, <laughs> and a pocket book on your shoulder. Because you are comfortable having something you have to tote. How you know that, Pastor? <laughs> <laughs> now look around, my, all y'all got earrings. Yeah, I got to have my earrings. I can't leave out the house with my earrings. <laughs> I got, it's almost 15 years, I know. You got to have, and the pocket book ain't got nothing but old mail. And junk in it. But you just got to have something on your show. <laughs> Let me make it spiritual to you. Why you walk around with all that old mail and old junk in your life? Mm. But you just accustomed to talking and you can't even let it go. Yeah. <laughs> and then let me tell you how foolery y'all get. I said, y'all. Because yeah, there's nothing with me here. You know how foolery y'all get? That y'all will go get a smaller pocketbook. Oh, or change the pocketbook. And take everything out that pocketbook. <laughs> And transfer. God done got you a new pocketbook, a new praise, a new shop, and you will transfer all that old mess into the new. And wonder why your bag back still hurting. Lord help. Some things we just got to check at the door. One thing I want y'all to write this down. The main thing y'all got to check out the door is your attitude. Mm. Stop coming to God with a made up mind. You got to check that attitude at the door. You got to check that attitude. That's the number one thing you got to check out at the door. You got to check your attitude. Right. When your attitude jacked up, you That's can't right. receive nothing. Yeah. Let, me, let me tell you what your attitude makes you. Your attitude makes you a double-minded person. Yeah. That's what your attitude makes you. A double-minded person. When your attitude jacked up, you, you double-minded, that means you unstable in all your ways. Lord That's help. What? You can't receive nothing. Yeah. So while you sitting in church clapping and you all nasty and your attitude, guess what happened? You're not receiving nothing from nothing. the Lord. That's it. In other words, you're wasting your time. Yes. We in Galatians chapter 6, yes. verse number 1. So the violence stops with us. The violence stops with us. We're in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 1. The lesson is stop the violence. I pray y'all get something on Facebook. Y'all share this. Like it. Stop the violence. The violence stop with us. Listen at this. God is dealing with the believers today. Y'all ain't gonna like Pastor here. Take a moment and stop looking at what Satan did. Come on. Look at what God has done and what you are doing. Oh Lord. We give so much credit to Satan. And Satan said, I ain't even did that. No, okay. Stop looking at what Satan did. The Satan is only doing what he was created to do. We spend so much time with Satan that you're giving Satan all your power every time you bring something on Satan, he not got your power. When you get whatever you give attention to, you give it power. Oh, it's it's just like a, a power saw. Whatever you hooked up to. So how you get hooked up to stuff? You give it your attention. Mm-hmm. My wife gave me her attention 15 years ago. We still hooked. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I got my little thing. <laughs> because we, we, have been, we have been looking at Satan for so long. Giving credit for things Satan didn't do. But we also give Satan credit for things God did. Oh, that's right. Satan ain't called a plague in your life. God did that. Right. Satan ain't called a plague on Israel. God did. Yes, he did. 
Satan ain't opened up the ground and swallowed 250 people. God did that. Yes, he did. Satan ain't said the wages of sin is death. God did that. Yes, he did. Satan ain't gave and took it away. God did that. Mm -hmm. So we're giving Satan all this credit. And God said, y'all, give him credit of what I did. Because what I did was there to make you. That's right. And because you're giving the credit to the wrong people, you're still missing the point. He says, quit looking at what Satan did. Quit giving Satan all that credit. And look at what God has done. We've been looking at what Satan did. We never figure out that God has done. Do you? Let me tell you how God helped me with this. I got to move on. Come around the time. Sometimes we be crying about the storm. Y'all, yeah. mm -hmm. y'all, y'all ever saying, you, you ever be, you ever be, it's raining outside and you running. Lord, it rain, and you crying all this in, you got the umbrella and all this stuff, not realizing by the time you look up, you in the house. Y'all missed it. We spend so much time looking that it's raining outside, we never pay attention that we in safety. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's right. We spend so much time looking at what we've been through. Now realizing you said the word been through. We spent so much time looking at how hurt we was, but I realized you were on the other side of what you've been through. Can we keep looking at what Satan did, but you haven't gave God glory for what he's done. You on the other side of the through, and you you sitting there, well, I, and look at what all I've been through. You on the other side of it. Oh, Lord, help me. We, we, we wrote songs and all about it. He said, so we got to quit giving, quit getting saying all that credit. The violence stops with us. When you start looking at what God has done and look at what you're doing. Yes. Right. Yes. See, this is what we got. We got to quit looking to the left and to the right, point the finger out of everybody, and look at yourself. That's right. Look at what you're doing in this situation. That's right. That's right. When you find your brother in the fault, what do you do? Because y'all know the first thing we do is, I knew it. <laughs> he wasn't saved in the first place. Oh, Lord. I knew he wasn't. I knew. The first thing we do is go doing the wrong thing. We find our brother in the fall. We stop being spiritual. Yeah. We start being fleshy. Yes. Negro-ish. That's how we be. <laughs> y'all get on the phone instead of praying for the brother y'all go talking about. Yeah. That's, that's what we do. We stop in the valley. The valley with your mouth. The valley with your hands. We stop in the valley. Right. So this is The first thing he said, when you find your brother in the fall, those who are spiritual. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. First thing you got to do, you got to be spiritual. Understand this. You got to be spiritual. Yes. Let me say this over here. You got to be spiritual. Yes. When you're dealing with other people, you can't deal with other people fleshly. No. Yeah. Right. no, no. Because when you get in the flesh, then they flesh, both y'all ain't no good. Right. The blind lead Lord the blind help the Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody got to be the light. Somebody got to be common sense. Yeah. Somebody got to make yeah. this thing make sense. Yeah. 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 So when you find them, that's your opportunity to be the sense that they're lacking. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not just for the pastor to make sense. We all should be able to make sense for each other. Right. This is not a message just from the pulpit got to be this way, but every member got to be able to help each other. Yes. 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 We should be able to love on each other in spite of each other, in spite of what you think, because everything is not going to go your way. Amen. Everything goes on the church. It's not going to be what you raise your hand and your idea was. Right. Right. We have a whole lot of people in church. Everything is not going to go how you want it to go. But you got to be able to have a, have enough spiritual in you yes. to say, God, if you lead me this way, I'm going to trust you. Yes. 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 Whenever, whenever situations get out of your hand or get above your pay grade, that's the time for you to step in and trust the Lord. Yes. Yes. That's the opportunity because when God is ready to trust you, he'll put it back in your hand. Yes. Anytime something gets out of your hand, that's for the Lord to do. Amen. Understand that. He said those who are spiritual, the first thing you do, you restore. Mm -hmm. Restore. Restore means to bring back to a better condition, mm -hmm. place, and position. Yes. Mm -hmm. He said, I need you to restore mm -hmm. your brother or your sister. Those, when you find them and they sin, the word fault means sin, mm -hmm. bad decision, mm -hmm. bad place, depression, anxiety. When you find them so low in their lowest point, he said, I need you to, to restore. Yes. Bring them back. You have the ability with your mouth, with your prayer, 
with your understanding of God, with your faith, you have the ability to restore them back to a better place. I don't want you to restore them back to the same place because they're going to do it again. We don't need you to go back to what you was doing. We need you to go to a better place. And what's a better place? I ain't talking about money. I ain't talking about material things. Sometimes they may need that. But I'm talking about a better place is a better mindset. Restore to them a better mindset. Why? Because when you give them money, they'll do the right thing with it. We keep giving people money with bad mindsets, and they keep doing the same thing. Absolutely. So they're going to be in a fault when you see them again. That's why when you're spiritual, you got to realize even helping the homeless, helping the hungry people. I'd be outside Bobo trying to get me a little low country ball. My man said, can I get something to eat? I said, okay, we might get something to eat, but we're going to go with you. Because mm-hmm. right. me who is spiritual realize, bro, you, you operating in another spirit. You're trying to get that jack today. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you're hungry, let me see you hungry. And we go over here and we get something to eat. Thank God McDonald's is right there. Because mm-hmm. yeah. when you're spiritual, you'll realize, man, I need to get you in a better mindset right. so you can handle being restored. Because some people just want to go to the store. They don't want to be restored. (laughs) Some people just want to get stuff out you. They ain't really trying to change. So when you're spiritual, spirituality gives you discernment for you to realize how to handle that person. Lord, I pray I'm going to find somebody who can really come in and teach us discernment because I want us to understand you got to learn how to discern some folk. Quit taking everybody hello as if they pleasant. Right. We're taking everybody hallelujah as if they saying hallelujah to the same God we serve. Right. Because discernment of God, your peace and your heart. Yeah. He says, not only do I need you to put them back in a great, in a better condition, place, and position, but I need you to pick them up yeah. and hang them back. Oh. Come on. This is a picture of a store. Uh-huh. And all the clothes is hung up on them. Uh-huh. See how they put it neat? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause people' life is like them shirts. Cause y'all do it all the time. I do it. When you go to the store, they try something on. When they can't fit it, they just throw it down. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You see how people in your life? They tried you on for a season, realized you didn't fit. They threw you down. Uh-huh. Yeah. When people be hooked on drugs and have an addiction, they tried it for a season and realized it didn't So addiction threw them down. Yeah. And God said, those who are spiritual, I need you to pick them up and hang them back up. Y'all missing. I need you to get this is the When you find your bro- brother and sister in the fall, that's your opportunity to, 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 to really iron out the wrinkles. Right. Yeah. Right. To make them approachable and visible for somebody who can fit their life. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Well, that's the word all by itself. Some folks feel out of place because they just don't fit in the place that they is. Right. And the reason why they don't fit because they're still in the balled up, in the balled up position. But if you ever just scratch them out. Uh-huh. But my wife tell me all the time when I when I feel like my shirt tight, she said to put your hand on your shirt and scratch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be all like this, oh yeah, I'm good. Because <laughs> sometimes you just need a little scratch. Yeah. Sometimes people just need just need you to scratch their faith a little bit. Yeah. Pray with them. Yeah. Don't talk about it. Pray with help them. Just help them stretch them out a little bit more. Realize you can get hung back up. Yeah. 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 Let me say restore. Any questions? He said I need you first to restore. Pastor. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm reminded of uh, the man, the man that um, he was sick mm-hmm. and the church was packed or whatever was packed. where Jesus was. It was yeah. packed. Yes. And he couldn't. And he couldn't, he couldn't get, get in. in. And they went up and to the roof. The roof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The roof up and let him down. That's and it. Jesus healed his um, a spirit. Jesus right. healed him spiritually. Yes. And uh, all the Pharisees and stuff got mad. Mm-hmm. They got mad because he healed them spiritually. They, they want to see him heal them where he can get up and walk. walk right. But to Jesus, like you said, that didn't matter. That didn't matter. That didn't yeah. matter. Uh, and yeah. when Jesus healed him, he was able to put him yeah. up on the shelf. And yeah, and, and do it. And see, leaving him where he was. And, and that's what Christ is about. Christ is about healing you from the root. That's right. Yeah. That's what Christ want to do. Christ going to change your life from the root. Yes. The root. Yes. We want Christ to do a little fix job, put uh, a band-aid on it. Quick. No, no, uh-huh. because Christ trying to get you to where he can stop the bleeding eternally. Amen. 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 Because Amen. the only blood come out, the only blood you see on the floor is the blood that came out you. Uh-huh. Right. So if he can go on the inside and stop the bleeding from the stop. inside, you'll yeah. stop bleeding on yeah. people on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
see, we've been looking for it, and that's why the gospel's so jacked up. That's why I say y'all gotta really get the word for yourself. Because we keep thinking the gospel is about getting money, calls, all the outside right. stuff. Jesus didn't die for you to have prosperity. No, he, didn't. he died so you can have eternal Amen. life. Yeah. We man having all prosperity, all that's external. Uh, yeah. He died for you to have internal, yeah. eternal, yeah. internal. Yeah. That means no matter, even though, even though a person dead in their grave, if they die with Christ, they have eternal. Amen. Yeah. It ain't no dying in them. Yeah. Right. But we don't understand it because we are so hooked on the outside stuff. Yeah. Well, Christ, I came to save your soul, yeah. not your flesh, mm -hmm. nor your spirit. The spirit ain't even chosen in the first place. Right. Glory to God. <sighs> you ever notice somebody said we got to try the spirit by the spirit? Yeah. yeah. I just struggle with that. <coughs> I, I, I just struggle with that. And the reason why, because every spirit came from God. Right. When he blew the breath in him, he blew him spirit. That's how you have life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now you got to, you, what you're trying is, you're trying to see what spirit that person allowing Operate. to operate, operate in them. Because right. everybody have a spirit of God in them. Yeah. That's how you have life. Mm -hmm. If nobody have God's spirit, they're down there at Woodville Cemetery. Mm -hmm. He said, I need you to, to pack up. To pick them up and hang them back up. That's restore. We almost finished. He said, when, I, when you restore, how do you restore? How do we stop the bad violence? First you restore. How do we restore them? In the spirit of me. I need you to get it. So when you find your brother, Mr. Brad, when you find your sister brother in the fault, he said, the first thing I need you to do is get in the spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that for folks over here. Adam smashes. Adam. He says, when you find your brother or sister in a fault, the first thing I need you to do, not them, I need you to get in the spirit. He said, in the spirit, I need you to get in the spirit. I don't need you to look at them in the natural. Because you're not going to be able to really handle what right. you see naturally. No, no. Right. So when you find your brother, when you find your children, when you find your spouse, when you find your family in the fall, he said, first I need you to do is get spiritual. Yeah. Getting spiritual means I need you to operate mm -hmm. in the spirit, the spirit that you truly believe in. Yes. Yes. So when you find your brother in the fall, shouting ain't going to help you now. Yeah. The rubber meeting the road when you need to get in the spirit. Because a lot of times we, we think a person shout when they're in the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's right. Some folks just performing. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you how it bothers me with performing. Because when the music stops, you stop, man, sit down somewhere. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now, the spirit ain't move you, the beat did. Because when God get a hold of you, when you go up, ain't no coming down. No, no. Ain't no coming down. Until you hit that flow somewhere. Yeah. And even with that, that's why when they be, when y'all be out here and hallelujah and all this here, what I tell y'all, let them go. Yeah, right. Because the spirit ain't going to hurt you. They bust their head. We'll know when we have memorial praying for them right. what spirit they were operating in. Right. He says, in the spirit, what kind of spirit? Spirit of meekness. Yes. I started to call uh, Sister Veronica this morning and ask her, who died? Because she sent me a message this morning talking about, do you see who died in this Aww. picture? <laughs> I started to say, who got the body? <laughs> and I'm sitting there practicing my speech. I'm so sorry for your loss. If anything, okay. like that. <laughs> then I had to go look again like, man, she not got me. But <laughs> in the spirit of meekness, the reason why I say, because meekness is power under control. This is what meekness is. It's power under control. Control. The power, when you find your brother in their weakest moment, you are in power now. Yes. And you got to have control of that power that just been, just been placed in your life. When you find out something about somebody, you have power now. And you have the ability, you got to get in the spirit to where you don't sit there and blast all their business to somebody. Should nobody know what happened if you're the only one been there. Yes, That's right. Even sitting in the pews. Should nobody, should nobody hear you having a conversation about somebody else? That's right. That's right. You should have power. Even if that person don't smell good sitting next to you. That's right. 
You should have enough, enough power and control to go to that person. Amen. Amen. And say, baby, uh, let me talk to you for a minute. Is something going on? Yes. Because it's deeper than a smell. Yes. Let me help you. Because all of us thank the God. Yes. Don't let this swallow a fool you. <laughs> let this thing to fool you, man. Because the God, I'm stank. Yeah. To God, you stank. Yeah. And that's how you ought to treat your brother or sister. Because you stank to God, man, don't, don't think because you got a little perfume on a day uh-huh. that you smell good to God. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Understand that. Yeah. When you find somebody, man, it could be the simplest thing. They don't have deodorant on Mm. Don't go put a whole sticker behind their back, moving your chair over. Right. Go to the dollar store, get them a little bottle, mm-hmm. spiritually, uh-huh. in the meekness, and help them. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you what I found out about this. And I, and, I, and I pray that this really bless somebody. Anytime God shows me a person's faults, a lot of times a person faults is really what they're in need of. Mm-hmm. He showed it to me because he doesn't possess me to fulfill it. Mm-hmm. So when you find your brother, need a little, need a little deodorant on, he doesn't possess you with enough funds to go get him some deodorant. Mm-hmm. When you find your brother hungry and you and you coming out of Randy's barbecue, that number five extra salt, little five dollar extra salt. <laughs> God possessed you to get some change because you had a 10. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And you passed by the hungry man because God done possessed you uh-huh. to supply that need. That's right. yeah. When you find me, you ever realize you're the only one who saw it? You ever despised something that nobody else said? Because that was God. He done yeah. possessed in you Amen. to help somebody else. Amen. You ever noticed that only they, they only came to you because they only came to you because God showed them you because you possess what they need. You got the power. For what they need. But he says when you find them, meekness under control, you have, you have the power to be under control. Listen to this. You must be in control to have control. Okay. Mm-hmm. You must be in control mm-hmm. to have control. Yes. When you have meekness, when you have something over somebody, y'all know we got some dirt on us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the truth. Everybody got some dirt. Everybody got some skeletons. Closets. Yeah, yeah, some of us got some chests. Some of us got some attics. Yeah. Some of us got some basements. Some of us got a grave in the backyard. Jesus. Some of us thank God a couple of our friends that passed and they took some with them. Lord. Some of some of them, some of us, some of us got some dirt that's darker than dirt. Lord help. But I'm power. They control. You got to have control. To be in control. You got to have control of your tongue. You got to have control of how you see people. You should never see anybody or you better than anybody. Spiritually. Spiritually ain't nobody is in the the right place to judge or look down on anybody. The only time you're looking down on anybody is you reaching down to help them up. Don't nobody have no room. To look down their nose or eyes, whatever you want to call it, on anybody. Please, please don't forget so quickly how you was once them. Please don't forget that you was at the free lunch park with me. Don't forget that I passed the joint to you. Don't forget that you used to borrow my clothes too. Don't forget it wasn't was that long you was catching a ride with me. Now you too bougie to get Johnny a ride. Okay. Don't forget that we used to share a bus transfer down there. Yes. Jesus. On Garden Street. Yes. Don't forget we both had an L.A. gear that, that light up at the bottom and we stuck the light. Come on. Don't forget. Just because you got a little red bottom, don't forget your bottom was black at one time. Amen. Don't, don't, don't soon forget. Power under control. Don't forget because God done bless you that you can just just spit on somebody else. Mm. Don't forget and, and don't don't think just because your life good right now, it can't turn around. Yeah. King Nebuchadnezzar showed me that he was a king and he thought he had it going on and God yeah. turned him around and had him in the field eating grass. Uh-huh. Yeah. Don't think because you're in a palace today, you can't be in the poor house tomorrow. My Lord. Yeah. 
talk to you that you got to have power under control. And don't think you can tear down other people's lives and expect to have a good one yourself. Yeah. Right. Be not dismayed. God is not more. Whatever a man sow, that is what you're going to reap. Yeah. Understand that you got to have control at that point. Be out of here last point. He said, I need you to stop the violence. Stop the violence in the church. Stop the violence in our street, but for us to stop the violence out there, we got to stop the violence amongst each other in here. Yes, sir. We got to love each other. We got to we got to come together. We got to have each other back. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got we got to be so close. We got to be so close that when you cough, I feel it come out my throat. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna be that close. No, no, that's close. No, that's close. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bring it to you spiritually. We got to be so close that you feel and you feel each other burdens. Yeah. You bear each other's burdens. Yeah. When you walk in here, I, probably, I love you guys so much that when you walk in here, I can know you're going through and you ain't said a word to me. Because yeah. that's how close I am spiritually to you guys. I know when you ain't right. Mm -hmm. I know when you done messed up. Yeah. I know when you done did something you ain't had no business doing. You ain't had to say a word to me. I know when you're going through because that's the love. That's the spirit. And I had the spirit of meekness to know that I ain't about to blast you. I'm going to say, let me talk to you for a minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. The way you sin is this now. He says, last thing, I lost my fucking pen. He says, what are you doing? I need you to restore. Restore your brother and sister. Yeah. In the spirit of meekness, mm -hmm. this is the icing on the cake. Considering mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. Ooh, boy, this, 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 this is the icing on the cake. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about somebody, before you open your mouth, mm -hmm. think of yourself. <laughs> Jesus! Amen. Woo! Before you do something to somebody else, before you do it, yes. think about what you got going on. Yes. Yes. Think about that. Consider yourself. Putting yourself, consider yourself as putting yourself in their shoes before you respond to what you saw or heard. Uh -huh. That's right. He said, I need you to restore to them considering uh -huh. what you're seeing yes. can very well be you. Think about that person you talk about about as if it couldn't be you. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't think about it. Think about it spiritually. That, that, that person that you think God just can't change. You was that person. Yeah. 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 And let you be told all is one temptation away from being that same person. Yeah. 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 How many of y'all got, got tipped today? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. We got tempted. I got tempted. Lord have mercy. I was tempted today. But I realized. I said, nah, I, 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 ain't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna go out like that because I can't afford to lose my witness. He said, but, but before I respond to what I saw and what I heard, I realized in the church, and I pray we change this narrative. Most of our drama in the church don't come by nothing you saw. Is everything you heard. Yeah. You ain't saw nothing for yourself. You heard she so so when she called you. Yeah. I heard it, 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 you ain't been in church in years. And you heard we got a meeting today to vote the past day. <laughs> Most of our consumptions goes by what we heard. Yeah. We never take a moment and see for ourselves. That's how our lives be so jacked up. Because we keep going by what somebody else said. And I don't even want to be that type of pastor in your life. I don't want you to keep going by what I say. I need you to go by what God said. Don't, don't, please don't let the only word you hear be the one come from me. You need to hear from the Lord yourself. And see what God sees and shows you about your life. He says, what if it was you? What if it was your child? That's right. That's you know what made me think about that? Every time we do a giveaway, we go out there, man, that back to school giveaway, thousands of people was out there. Yes. And I was saying, Lord, thank you yes. that I didn't have to stand in this line. Right. Because we take for granted those little things. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I pledge in my life, in my family, in my, in my house, I will never give somebody something I won't receive. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's I will never give a pair of shoes I won't put on myself. Uh -huh. I never give you food that I wouldn't eat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I consider myself. Yeah. Yeah. I don't look down on nobody else because I was once that person. Yeah. In some areas, still that person. Look, look at this. The mirror. Yeah. Jesus. The mirror. Mm, 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 mm. Let me tell you why God gave me this mirror. We finished. 
Because the person you're looking at that you call them a fault uh -huh. is really you. you yeah. Wow. Yeah. The Bible says warning comes before destruction. Yes, it does. God, God is sin. A sin a person your way that's the inner you that you keep covering up with all that makeup and stuff. Mm -hmm. That you keep covering up with that fake praise and that fake worship and that, yeah. the fake hand claps and your fake preaching and all this yeah. stuff here. Because believe me, you don't need you, you you do not need the Holy Spirit to preach. No. The devil know the word. Yes, I The devil know what's written. Yes, yes. So you're hiding behind all that stuff. You ever notice? I mean, it's just me, but I want to peep y'all up the game. Uh, a person that speaks about sin and certain sins the most, that's the one they doing. Yeah. Yes. A person so hard about lesbian, could they gay? Yeah. Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry, was I going to say that word? My uh, PA, uh, I was that's good, that's clear. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they beat down the most, that's what they're dealing with. And so they shine the light on you so it can seem like it's taking it off them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Right. That's what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so even with that, man, you done lost your weight, you done put your little summer outfit on. Look at that, she was wrong for putting that on. No, you mad because you couldn't fit that. <laughs> people don't even want you to, to enjoy your own self. That's right. yeah. people, yeah. people will not even help you celebrate your own achievement. I don't care if you lost a pound. Tell God, thank you, I'm a pound shot. Even if you ain't said a lot today, tell God I mean, one day I ain't said a lot. No. So y'all got to know when to shout. You ain't lying today. You ought to tell God thank you. <laughs> you lied up a storm yesterday. You Lord say, help. You said the person in the mirror is you. It's you. The reason why we got to stop the violence, let me tell you why, why violence happened even in our streets. Because we only see it from one way. Mm. Where we're standing. Right. You only see it. So I, I, I kill you because this is what I'm standing at. Mm -hmm. I talk about you because this is what I'm standing at. But before we pull that trigger, before you pull that trigger with your tongue, yeah. mm -hmm. before you pull that trigger with all the behind the scenes stuff, thinking because man don't see it, God still sees it. Yeah. 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 You ain't getting away with nothing. Judgment is coming. That's when mm -hmm. everything will be revealed to you. Mm -hmm. Just because nobody sees it, don't think God ain't writing it That's down. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You got an answer to the deeds that were happening in your body. Yes. You got an answer to the times that you had. So mm -hmm. he said, before you, you do that now. I need you to take a moment and look through their lens. Mm -hmm. mm. Before you pull that trigger, before you have those secret meetings, and before you get on the phone and talk about folks and all this shit, look at life through their lens just for a moment. Mm -hmm. Take a moment and get outside yourself. And that will stop a lot of violence Amen. in our churches, Amen. in our homes. Yes. I realize our kids the way they are because we created that. Yes. Yes. We created yes. monsters. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I'm, I'm, I'm the firm, first one to let you know I created some monsters. Yes. Yes. Because let me tell you why I messed up at your kid. I always said, I'm going to give my kids what I didn't have. Yeah. That was the worst that was mistake good. I ever made. Yep. Yeah. Because I wouldn't be the man I am today if I didn't go through what I went through and had what I had. Exactly. So I wanted my kids to turn out a little decent. I should have put them through what I did. <laughs> but I thought I was doing them a favor by giving everything to them, taking the places I ain't never been. Man, I'm raising some monsters. Jesus. They don't appreciate nothing. They just tear up everything you got like money grown tree. Yeah. I'm talking about y'all kids too. Yeah. And, I, and I realized that the violence started with me. Yeah. So I got to stop it. Yeah. It starts with us. We have created. Let me tell you, the, the, right. man, let, let me tell you the, the craziest and the deepest monster that we created in our children. Mm. We always come in here, what you want? Mm. Yeah. Never in my life of 35 years of living. Has my sister, my mother, father ever asked me what I want? Mm -hmm. What they put in front of me is what I ate. Exactly. What they put on the bed was what I wore. Right. What they told me to go is when I went. When they told me I better be in the house, this is where I've been at. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is still fear. That is still authority, where they respect authority. That's why the police is killing our children. It's not the fact that they're right, but you got to respect authority no matter what color or form it is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
But the violence stops at the house because first, the first authority your kids ever see is in the house. So when they get killed on the street, it's because they never respect you in the house. They ain't scared of nothing. They don't know when to lay down. They don't, they don't know when to just do what they say. I tell my son all the time, pull the over, boy, go to jail. I'll be there in the morning. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. Go to jail, boy. Go to jail. I got you. Yeah. Right. It was a felony. You can't see the judge till Monday anyway. Right. Rest a little bit. Right. But I'd rather have you alive right. and smart yeah. and obey authority mm-hmm. than, I, than be burying you. Yeah. This is how we stop the violence. Yes, we stop the violence, but it starts in the house. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it starts in the church house. It starts in your house. Yeah. We can't expect the kids to raise, the, the streets to raise us and our kids. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm, I'm going to close with this here. I don't think I got no more. <coughs> yeah, I love you all. There's nothing you can do about it. Can I see that? <laughs> I love you enough to tell you the real. Yeah. That's right. I see a lot dealing with our children, and, our, and, and I'm, I'm only speaking from this church. I can't talk about nobody else. This is what God gave me. And I say this loud on Facebook, and I pray they're listening, that we got to first put God first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But God can't raise, or the street can't raise you and your children. Mm-hmm. That's right. Amen. Because some of us, as parents, it's just like the kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It hurts my heart that you're in the club with your kids. Right. Yeah. Do you know what, what hurt me, Sister Jessica? <laughs> that our kids dress little clothes, tight clothes. Yeah. Yes. But you brought it. Right. Come on. Well, y'all got real quiet. Come on. Mm. Ain't got no job. They yeah. nails done because you sent them down there. Yeah. 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 They hair all done because you paid. Yeah. That's, that's next week Bible study. Don't touch my hair. But listen, <laughs> you, you brought that. Yeah. 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 Made that monster. Because when they was little, you thought it was cute. Now it's making you cry. Yeah. 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 Now, they, now they're disobedient even back to you. Yeah. And the laws done got so crazy where you can't even kill them no more. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You gotta hit him in certain area, area so you can cover it with clothes. That's right. What he says, we gotta stop the violence. The violence stops here. Mm-hmm. The violence stops how I treat people. Yeah. How I learn how to treat myself. Mm-hmm. Then they will roll over into my children, they roll over into my house. Yeah. But we gotta stop the violence. Man, people come to church to be delivered, to be free. Yeah. They should not leave church the same way they came in. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Church is not here to answer all your problems. God is. Yes, that's right. Why you say that, preacher? Because quit coming to church for people. Yeah. Come to church for God. Yes. 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 I'm telling you this, dude. Do you know why we get so hurt? Because you came to church for all the wrong reasons. Lord help. Yeah. Came to church because a man and your friend here. Yeah. You came to church because there's a thing to do and you got a position. Never once looking for God. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But the buck stops here. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to stop the violence that's going on within yourself and your house, mm-hmm. you got to come to God. Yes, you do. That's right. Because you got to get spiritual. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because being unspiritual going to cause you to be dead or in a jail somewhere. That's right. Yeah. Unspiritual going to make you lose your mind. Yeah. It's going to make you destroy your peace. It's going to steal your joy. Come on. Yeah. But he said, I need you today. I need you to stop the violence. Yeah. No matter what somebody else say about you. Why are you answering the stuff that you know not true? Mm. If it ain't true, it should not affect you. Yeah. Yeah. But if it is true, that's God's way of telling you, set your house in order. Yes. Yeah. When somebody reveal the truth in you, tell them thank you. Because yeah. that's one more thing I need to work on. Yeah. Mm. Somebody tell me my breath stinks, thank you. Amen. I go brush my teeth. That's right. Amen. That's simple. Yeah. yeah. Somebody tell me I wronged them, thank you. That let me practice on how to say I'm sorry. Stop holding grudges because don't go to your grave with a grudge. Because yeah. that, that grudge may hold you down. Yes. When God cracked the sky and you try to get up, all them grudges and unforgiveness going to hold you right there. Uh, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, 
name is confirmation because you already know <laughs> what you've done to that person. What you've done to that person. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people do not like confrontation, mm -hmm. definitely not spiritually. Mm -hmm. People like to be told you're wrong. Yeah. Right. You know what they do. Right. Right. People do not like to be told they you're wrong. They right. And they use the Bible and take right. out scriptures right. to make it seem like they right. 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 Yeah. Can I get an amen? Amen. Any questions? We finish. I, See your hand. I remember when I was raising those boys, I was a single parent by myself. Mm -hmm. And I remember the Holy Ghost telling me, he must before they did it, he had that told me. He said, if they ever fight in your house, call the police on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had three boys, the only woman there, you know, boys could tear up a house if you yeah. let them in the day. Let them. Not, the first time they fight, I called the police. And they were ages like 11, 12, and 13. <laughs> I surprised them. You know, see, mm -hmm. y'all think you shouldn't do that. Yeah. You should do it. Yeah. It works. It works. Mm -hmm. I called the police on the boys. The boys, and they, the, when the police came in the house, they knew, the, they knew to respect authority. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And after that, I mean, I had another fight. On my, I had another fight on my boys at all in my house. I ain't never had another fight. If you do them things, them things will stop some we'll stuff. Stop it. Mm -hmm. It stops some stuff. You say, no, I ain't gonna do that. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Do it. It and open their eyes to see you ain't playing. You ain't yeah. playing. Amen. You ain't playing because if you don't stop the fighting and the problems, like they said, they end up all kind of they other things. The yeah. They end up out there doing yeah, the same thing. Any other questions? Can we all stand? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, some, well, you can talk to <laughs> 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 You can talk to people. Like, and then say, oh, um, uh, I forgave them or I forgot about it, but then they'll see this same this person that they're supposed to have forgot about walk in the room and then they move, they either don't talk or they kind of, they use the body language to like remove right. themselves from that situation. Yeah. That still hurts them. That still hurts them. That's yeah. still violence. You know yeah. what I mean? Even though you physically didn't touch them or say anything, but your actions, your body language, not yeah. speaking to them, you know, Oh, I, I, I don't have to speak to you. I, I forgave you, but I don't have to speak to you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not what Christ did. Yeah. We don't need so, so much dirt. Yeah. But Christ still forgave us, and he still talks to right. us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If a person can't speak to you, they ain't forgave you. Exactly. If y'all can't talk, they ain't forgave you. And I, and I say that, I say that, and I, and I learned that in being married. Being yeah. married, because even when I get my wife nerves and she's mad, I sit down in my plate, stand in front of me. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> she not forgave me again. When the when the when the when the person can't forgive me, they won't speak. I understand this, but forgiveness is not for them. It's for you. Let your conscience be clear up. If they don't want to speak to you. That's on them. But then I get petty. I'm making my business go speak to them. Hey, how you doing? How I know, you? right? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but I see little Elroy, he growing up, and he, <laughs> you heard about the weather? It won't rain tomorrow. I'm going to call the car and say, I'm going to make sure I mess around, get a table right next to you. Are you going to eat that? <laughs> I do that. I do that. Because I'm going to show you I ain't got no issues with you. Uh, thank you. Issues with me. Thank you, sir. Yeah. There you stay? go. Let's thank break. You. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for every heart and mind that came out tonight for Bible study. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy and your wisdom and your knowledge. And we thank you, God, because tonight we're deciding in our hearts that we're going to stop the violence. Yes. We're going to, when we find our brothers and sisters, even ourselves in the fall, God, we, those who are spiritual, we're going to restore to them in the spirit of meekness. Considering ourselves, lest we be tempted, lest we fall in the same thing we're talking about. Unless we fall in the same thing we're watching somebody else go through. Yes, kind of, Father, I pray for the spirit of us to start building each other up. Yes. Help us help each other on every lean inside. Yes. Help us bear some of this weight that each other is carrying mm -hmm. to get rid of a lot of these burdens. You said one can chase a thousand, but two can put ten thousand to flight. Yes. God, I pray for your spirit to fall in the house of freedom tonight. Those who are watching, those who are with us. Those who are connected with us, God, I pray for a change about their lives. Thank you, Lord. you, God, to have your way, God, that every life change after today, yes. that this yes. word run free amongst your people. Mm. And, God, you bless us. Bring us back safe and sound yes. with a praise in our heart. And I pray that the rest of the week be better than the first part of the week. Yes. Yes. God, we bless you now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Also, are we still live real quick?
still at? Yes. It's, listen, I want to thank God. We have reached a thousand followers. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. We have a thousand people Amen. all over the country that follows us. Amen. Every Sunday they get our messages, Bible study things we got going on. That's an awesome thing. Amen. And we reach people all over the place. Yes. yes. Can we tell God thank you? Thank you, God. As for me, as for me, in my house, in my house, we will, we will serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.